<coughs> Hello again, everyone. Uh, let's talk about chapter 30, uh, Induction and Inductance, once again from the Halliday and Resnick book, 10th edition. Chapter 30, Induction and Inductance. I'm going to do two problems this time. They're relatively, relatively brief. Problems 47 and 48 from that chapter 30. Let's take a look at it and kind of take it from there. For problem number 47, inductors in series. Problem number 47, in inductors in series. Two inductors, capital L sub 1 and capital L sub 2, are connected in series and are separated by a large distance so that, magnetic, so that the magnetic field of one cannot affect the other. A, show that the equivalent inductance is given by capital L sub EQ, capital L sub equivalent, in other words, is equal to capital L sub 1 plus capital L sub 2. Hint, review the derivations uh, for resistors in series and capacitors in series, which are similar here, uh, which are similar here in this case. B, what is the generalization of A for N inductors in series? So B, what is the generalization of, of part A uh, for capital N inductors in series? Is there a generalization there? Well, let me read some of this here. And th this is all the answers, as in the past, are all going to scroll through uh, at the end. And, and like problems that I'm doing here and problems that I'm not doing here on the board uh, pertaining to this chapter in the Halliday and Resnick book, all of those problems that I have solved and have posted are going to scroll again. If you're not in my class at the university where I'm at, uh, you'll see it on the video that you'll have access to, uh, that everyone will have access to. Uh, and you'll see the, the answers to all the problems that I've done from the Halliday and Resnick book, chapter 30. Uh, as with other chapters, the same way you're seeing that. So we've said that a number of times. Okay, uh, and that will be the case. I mean, till we till, till we also do chapter thirty one and chapter thirty two, and then we're done with this uh, discussion of the Halliday and Resnick book. Uh, for number forty seven, we are told we are told that voltage is proportional to inductance. That's equation thirty thirty five. Just as for resistors, it is proportional to resistance. Um, so what are we told here, guys? We're told essentially that uh, number of turns uh, times the magnetic flux per turn is equal to capital L sub I. Capital L is a constant. I is a constant for particular circumstances, oftentimes, though not necessarily always. But for our purposes right now, for a given value of i, if i is a really big number, then l times i is a really big number as well. That is indicative of total flux. The total amount of flux that the total amount of magnetic flux that is present is directly proportional to the current times this constant l. The more current, the more magnetic flux. The less current, the less magnetic flux. It's believable. All right. Uh, if that is the case, and it is, uh, let's see what else we can say here, guys. Let's give ourselves just right off the bat a little room here. We wrote this. You have this, so you always have it as your reference as well, uh, as well as what's labeled on the introduction to videos as well. So let's see what we have here. Well, if this is the case, for a given value of i, and again, i can vary. If we're talking about alternating, uh, in fact, i definitely can vary. Of course it can. Um, and, you know, so i can vary, and as it is varying, uh, there's things we can talk about. So let's see what we have here. We got this. We said this as well. And what we're able to say is there's the, the, the negative Li, and they, they have the, the negative numbers in there somewhere. Look, guys, the, the real big thing to look at here is if you want to go here, dt, and you want to go here, 
dt. If two things uh, are equal to one another, their derivatives are equal to one another, if you throw a negative out in front, may still remain equal to one another. Um, this thing right here, because it's a reactive sort of phenomenon, L is a constant, you pull it out and you get the I dt. Well, that's equal to the potential difference associated with the inductor at any particular time. Make a long story short, if we're talking about absolute values, or let's do it so we can kind of shake the negative signs here. We're not sure what the negative signs, even what's negative, what's positive sometimes, because the opposite of a negative number, the opposite of a negative number is positive. So there's a lot can be said here, guys. So we get down to here. So kind of see what we can say here, guys. Um, Let's see if we can play how we how we play the whole thing out here. Let's let's just say a number of things and see what we can do. Uh, if you were talking and we can kind of shake the absolute values here and kind of just stay like this, if we do that, we can say that E sub L1 for one inductor, uh, inductor one, E sub L2 for inductor two, let's just kind of go. Yeah, I can add them together. I guess, I suppose, I hope we're going to say that there is. There's got to be some sort of... It is a grand total. You, you add, as you're going through inductors, the voltages add up. You know, voltage is proportional to inductance. And the more voltage that's going through in aggregate, in series, you add up all these all these potential differences occurring in series, they just straight up, you know, potential difference in series adds up. So if you add all these potential differences together, you're going to get the grand total potential difference. But we said that essentially, we said that. Okay, then leave the negative L, the IDT, right here. Now, wait a minute. We also said that for each one of these, for each one of these, looking like that, that reality holds. Just label them appropriately. Well, this is L sub 1. The IDT, it's in series. So it's the same the IDT uh, because it is in series. Uh, the, the current is changing, and it's moving in series, so it, it changes the same way across all the elements there. Um, same thing with that. Because it's in series. That's what this one. plus dot, 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 true, at the end of the day, forgive me, those were negatives, okay, because we, we said, you know, we're, we're sticking with this definition, and then we kind of just went here, and uh, this works, this is, this is true, this is much more specific, I guess you could say. So we'll stay with that. We'll leave the negative there. And you got all this. That's leaving this. All right. We got this. Set it equal to that. What 
always wondering about how I'm going to color coordinate all of this stuff, you guys. Absolutely true. Well, yeah, sure, okay, great. If that's the case and we've got all the notes present, always debatable what you want to erase, what you want to keep, but eventually you got to erase something. Let's deal with this, you guys. What I got right here. Got this. At the end of the day, it's equal to this. Factor out the DIDT from everything up here. And figure factor out the DIDT over there. Uh, what you end up getting is, I'll just put the last guy first here. And I'll uh, see how you, let me just try to speak entirely the same language throughout the board here. Uh, the other one is, so let's see what we can say here, guys. We can do a bunch of things here. Yeah, just take on this on this top one right here, factor out the DIDT. On this top one right here, entirely factor out the DIDT. All these negatives, factor out a negative one from all those negatives. And you got this. You can put a negative one right here, or just leave a negative symbol here. Uh, for this one right here, just look at it, guys. Basically what you're doing is on the bottom, you're factoring out DIDT. And that's the first thing I wrote here. Factored out DIDT and I got this. On the top here, I factored out DIDT and I had a whole bunch of negatives added together. Well, that's the same as negative of the sum of uh, the opposite of the negative quantities that were here. Just factor out the negative, have it here, have this. You know where this is going. You divide by DIDT on each side, and you got negative LEQ equals negative of this sum. Multiply by negative 1 on each side, absolutely true. That answer is B. Heck, it also answers A, because we only wanted to find it for two items, for A. This is B, uh, and for A, if you just had two, if the N was two, it doesn't matter what the N is. Whatever the N is, you're going to get the answer. LEQ equals like that sum, and for B, LEQ equals this sum. Well, if N is equal, this right here is a general case of a more special case. Just make N equal to 2 and you get that answer. In the general sense, you get all this. And that's what they're talking about when you got this. So one comes from the other. Um, Gain potential differences. Let me try to say, see here, guys. There's a number of ways you can see it, guys. It's, it's kind of all over the place that way. Once, once you've drawn the general conclusion, you're done. You're done. Okay, that was 47. 
For 48, they're going to ask, they're essentially going to ask the same question. Again, the, the, the big thing that was going on here was, you know, E L sub 1 plus E L sub 2 plus E L sub 3 plus dot, 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 plus E L sub N uh, is, is where we were getting these answers, guys, and how it actually worked out. You know, the equivalent potential difference associated with him. This all came essentially from E equivalent equals E1. Let me not put the L's there, but the L's are really there. E sub n, small n or capital N, does not matter, guys. And each one of those is associated with negative L di dt. Negative L di dt, uh, negative L di dt, negative L1 di dt, negative L2 di dt, negative L3 di dt, dot, 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 plus negative L sub n di dt. And at the end, it's, it's negative L equivalent di dt. The di dt is the same. It's happening in series. So the current under consideration is constant at all instances, it, 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 for each particular instant. It's not, a, it's not a constant current, but at an instant, that current is common to everybody. And when there's a, and the, and the di dt, the di dt is also common to everybody if we're talking about items that are in series, if we're talking about inductors that are in series. And that played, that fueled this whole process. Let's look at number 48. So, I mean, there's some interesting stuff that way. 48, they're saying, you know, just like we had, just like it was really important to talk about the sum the sum of potential differences when it's in series, when it's in parallel, it's the sum of currents. The current was constant in, the, in, in this series of inductors. The current was constant at a particular instant, even though the current was constantly changing. It was constantly changing, but whatever, whatever value it had at a particular time, it had that value across all of the inductors that were in series had a constant I at a certain time, and that I changed. That's why we're going di dt and we're getting a non-zero number oftentimes. So it's, it's changing, but it's changing in exactly the same way across all of the inductors that are in series at a particular instant that I is a constant. It's equal, I don't want to say constant, I keep saying that. It, at that instant, I guess you could say, it's the same for everybody, if it's in series. And the potential differences add up. The, po the potential differences are what add up. So, uh, so what we have here is potential differences will add up when we're talking about series um, inductors that are in series. Okay, what happens if they're in parallel? If they're in parallel, the E is a constant for a particular instant. It's the same for everybody at a particular rate. Even if the E is constantly changing, the electromotive force, the epsilon sub L, even if it's constantly changing, it's constantly changing to the same values at a particular instant for everybody. The E's are hold up at a particular instant. They're equal. But the I's all have to add up at that instant to tell you what the current is at that instant. Different dynamic. That leads us to problem 48. 48, inductors, 48, inductors in parallel. Two inductors, L1 and L2, are connected in parallel and separated by a large distance so that the magnetic field of one cannot affect the other. A, show that the equivalent inductance is given by one over LEQ equals one over L1. I'm sorry. Is given, show that the equivalent inductance for the two that are in parallel is given by, the equivalent inductance for the ones that are in parallel uh, is given by 1 over capital L EQ equals 1 over capital L L1 
Uh, I, okay, guys, I seem to have forgotten how to speak. Let me try it one more time here. Uh, show that for th this parallel situation that 1 over capital L-E-Q equals 1 over capital L-1 plus 1 over capital L-2. Easy for me to say. Uh, hint, review the derivation, they're saying the same thing. What is the generalization for capital N inductors in parallel? Okay? Uh, and again, I wrote small n, big n, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, they were asking for capital N, and that's not a big deal. You just put a capital N here for N. The big thing is the mathematics that just took place, you guys, to actually get something like that to happen. So for the cap, you know, small N or capital N, I mean, I mean the same thing. And, uh, and we'll work on it that way. Um, so you look at it. Et cetera, et cetera. That's not, that's not a big deal. Okay. You know the process, guys. Let's do 48. Let's see how that argument proceeds. It should be pretty straightforward. We at least start with many of the same. We, we, we at least start um, with, I think, one of the equations for sure, the definition of how this stuff works out. And we'll... Uh, Let's see how it works out. Let's, let's, let's kind of look at it. Stuff's much easier done than said sometimes, guys. Let's get to it. All right, now we're talking about a parallel, you know, parallel, not series, uh, for the items under consideration. How does that play out? Well, as I said, a lot of the same equations, uh, at least not a lot of the same, that's, I shouldn't say a lot, that's way too, too generalized. Uh, the one equation certainly of great significance related to inductors is a commonality in both problem number uh, problem number 47 and in problem number 48. What are we talking about? Well, okay, we, we have talked about this a little bit. The phi sub b, and this time I didn't put uh, the n number of turns there. We're assuming this could involve n number of turns. The, the n number, the capital N number of turns, and the capital N here that they're talking about in the actual problem is the number of inductors, not the number of turns. Um, but you could have, you know, associated with turns that are pl taking place in an inductor, you could have N there. Well, this phi sub B could account for there being 100 turns, for there being 1,000 turns, or whatever there's going to be, for there being 10 turns. So that's not a big deal. It's very similar to stuff we've done in the past. If you go D phi sub B, if you go D phi sub B DT, D phi sub B DT equals negative L DI DT. Now, remember what we said here. It was, it was essentially... Well, there's a lot said here, and, and, and the negatives and how it, the absolute value and stuff. We, we know it's going to be negative because it's sort of a, it's, it's, it's opposing what's taking place. So a lot of times the negative finds itself there um, as, as, as a convenient book, bookkeeping um, as a convenient book, book, uh, bookkeeping method when we do that. All right. Um, you know, you took uh, the negative L di dt, you went d dt with it, you ended up getting negative L di dt. Right, uh, and that's equal to uh, an electromotive force associated with the inductor. I just called it epsilon right there, okay? So essentially, guys, it's stuff we've seen already. D 
d phi sub b dt equals negative L equals this. Okay, we've been there. Uh, I tell you what, I mean, can you, can you do something here? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, this is what E is. So this E is the same as this guy. Um, that's E. That's that. Um, what are you going to say? Well, let's solve for di dt. Or forgive me here. Let me let me uh, right. Let's solve for di dt. Actually, di dt is going to be d phi sub b dt divided by negative l. Uh, the negative can go on top. That's not a big deal. Well, yeah. Again, guys, this is this is the uh, you know this is this is of interest here. Uh, basically, the e for everybody. Well, let's just put it this way: associated with inductor one in parallel, associated with inductor two in parallel, associated with inductor three in parallel. Um, associated with inductor capital N in parallel. Um, they are all equal, and they're equal to one potential difference. That one potential difference is this. It's the same for everybody. Really. Yeah, it's it, absolutely what it is. It's the one potential difference, so you can put the negative on top. Like this. That. For any for any given uh, for any for any given uh, inductor. So what are we saying here, guys? Um, well, I mean, be careful. I mean, that's, that's, that's for, for any given inductor, we're looking at a circumstance such as this, uh, some, e, some E sub I, let's say, you know, or whatever, uh, and what's associated with the D phi sub B uh, dt, that's an E, let's say something like that. Uh, I wrote it a little differently in my notes, but it should be pretty straightforward. You got this. Um, the equivalent, well, they're all equal across the resistor. All equivalent across, across the resistor, guys. Uh, so we're basically, you know, for all of these, the Vs we're talking about, uh, V1... I say equivalent. I mean, I, you can say a lot of things, but V1 equals V2. I'm just I'm saying basically the same thing. So it's not a big deal. So we know that. I mean, we know all this stuff, guys. Let's let's figure this out. When you're talking about things that are in parallel. The grand total current at a particular instant, the grand total current at a particular instant is the current in one of the branches at that same instant plus the current in another branch at that same instant plus dot dot plus I sub n. In the habit of writing small n all the time, they're asking for a capital N. That's fine. We know that. Yeah, we do know that. Um, we know that if you have an equation here, and this is, for, this is for an instant. At any given instant, at any given instant, there is an I1, an I2, da, 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 an I sub capital N. Sure, 
If you, at, if you add the currents at that particular instant, that's the equivalent current at that particular instant. You've got to add them all together. What happens at another time? At another time, depending when, depending where in this periodic function we are actually reaching out to find what kind of current we have at another time, it's very likely different currents at that point. Yeah, but it's the same exact current. It's just a different current than what you earlier had, but um, uh, forgive me, it's not the same. It's, uh, the, the currents actually add up. They are at a particular instant. Go back here, guys. Forgive me on that one. Uh, wrong. False statement. Um, at a particular instant, there is a current in one of the, in, in, in one of the branches, uh, in one of the loops, there is a current. One of the parallel loops, there's a current, I sub 1. At that same instant, there is a different current for that same instant, potentially a different current, I sub 2. Plus dot, 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 to the, all the way across, these are, theoretically, they can be different currents through each of the loops. When you, at a particular instant, different currents through each of the loops, different current, this one is potentially different from that. They might be the same, sometimes they are, but in general, we can say that they can be different. Different, different, and they're all, they're all different from one another. When you add them together, you get the equivalent. If you go somewhere down the line at a different time, and you say, hey, at this time, what is going on? At a different time, at time T1, this is what, you know, at time T1, this is what we had. At time T2, the same phenomenon holds, but it's a different I1, probably. A different I2 from the different I1, et cetera, et cetera. Very important to see that. And they're alternating. I mean, this is all in flux, but you got it to here. Now, we do know that in general, if you have an equation, if you, we do know that in general, this is a function. This varies with time, and each one of these varies with time, but at a particular instant, all these add up to that. True. Great. If two, things are, if two functions are equal, their first derivative is equal. So you're looking at this, and it just kind of lets just make the long story short, guys. I mean, um, Def definitely a dynamic process. Absolutely true. No debate there. It's true. Uh, based on what we know of the mathematics. So we got that. Okay, great. Great. Um, all of these are equal. So you might as well leave it the way I had it. Based on this, based on things that we have said, Based on things that we have said, we've got this equal to that. Yeah, and it's the same, they're the same. Uh, so what we get is, at the end of all this, the equivalent, uh, this, DEI, this DEIQ, this DE, uh, I'm sorry, this DE, uh, can't even talk, this, this DIEQ, this DIEQ, dt, this di eq dt is equal to this. And that's the equivalent. Okay, um, 
That's negative. Right. This, this negative d phi b dt over L is di dt, and the negative d phi b dt is indeed E. Let me put an E right here. di dt is negative E over L. Wait a minute. That's negative E over L. There's got to be an EQ mathematically that'll pull that off. And again, that came from negative d phi b dt over some L. Well, if this is the totality of the flux, and the to the to the, the this is the negative d phi b dt, that's just negative e, and negative e is the same throughout the whole thing. Put an eq right here if you wish. The big thing is you got this, and all the di, all the dit's, di1t. I'm sorry, all. All the di dt's, di1 dt, di2 dt, plus dot, 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 all those, let's add them together. All the di1 dt's are negative electromagnetic, uh, negative epsilon, negative e, or you can call it e or epsilon, I guess, uh, negative epsilon over the associated L. So this right here is negative epsilon over L1, negative epsilon over L2, negative epsilon over L sub n. But they're there. And I guess I'm adding them together, guys. Well, we know how this story works, how it ends. There's let's factor a negative epsilon out of here, and let's factor a negative epsilon out of here and divide by negative epsilon, and we end up getting. You know, you can multiply, you can multiply by negative one anytime. I would probably just factor out. I'd factor out a negative one. I'd factor out a negative one on each side, then multiply by negative one on each side, and you just got e over leq equals e over l1 plus e over l2 plus dot 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 dot. Factor out the epsilon on each side, divide by epsilon. You got all this. It's pretty pretty straightforward stuff. And there it is. Look, uh, if I make the, the number capital N under if I make the number capital N under consideration to be the number capital N equals two, then it's just this. And that was the first thing they ran. And that was the first thing that ran. They were asking to get this answer for the first part, and then for the first part they were asking to get this answer, and for the second part they were asking to get this answer. You got both answers in there. Okay. Um, You know, and I, I showed it different ways. I, I kept, rather than keep the negative, I, I, I could have kept the negative d phi b dt associated with conductor one, associated with conductor two, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, yeah, that's true, but it doesn't matter. Whether it's associated with one, two, three, all the way to capital N, any number of capital N, that right there, when you're talking about a parallel circuit, Across the parallel loops, there is equal, equal potential. So the negative d phi sub b dt 
is equal potential across all those. So it works just the same. I have that in here as well. Uh, kind of went into it, uh, showed it a little bit differently, but that's essentially the process on that, guys. And there's, and there's games you can play with this. You're playing the same sort of mental gymnastics, the same sort of mathematical games that we've played with capacitors and that we've played with resistors. Similar kind of argument if you have the basic assumptions under control, the basic, as long as you have the basic assumptions under control related to, hey, what goes on when we're talking about uh, a circuit in series and you have inductors in series, uh, and also what all, you know, and then contrast that or kind of go somewhere else and say, well, what goes on when you have inductors in parallel? And you're playing games similar to what you did with capacitors and resistors. Now, the conclusions you draw, again, the mathematics will, will, will lead us to where we have to go when we're doing this correctly. And we've done that, and we've got that under control. All right, guys, um, that is all that I wanted to say uh, for the Halliday and Resnick book, Chapter 30. There will be other problems scrolling. Thank you very much for your time.